Hey guys, my name is Rudy. In this video, we're going to be building a master detail scaffold for Flutter. If you're coming from iOS, you're pretty familiar with this because this is one of the components that UIKit gives you out of the box. But what about uh, when we want to use this for Flutter? It was pretty easy. Um, if you want to get to where we are now, um, we created a bottom navigation bar that goes to a navigation rail and a list view on the left. This is really useful for navigation because we have um, a very dynamic way to reuse all of our UI. And here you can see it's just a minimal amount of code and we're not having to duplicate logic depending on what um, screen we're on. And if you want to see that, we actually have that here in the common folder, which you can grab in the source code. So to do this, we're gonna be creating a contact list. So let's go ahead and add a new folder called contacts. Let's make a screen. Let's go ahead and import material. So we're gonna call it contacts. Contact screen, contact screen. And let's go ahead and add this item to our navigation. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and fix that import. And let's go back. So if we hot reload, we see that we do have this new navigation item. Perfect. So Let's go ahead and start with what you would normally do when you're building out this. We would, let's go ahead, we need to create a contact class and then have some dummy data. So here we have our contact object and let's give our, our dummy data function. This will allow us to have some UI to work with. So what we like to do when building this is you want to at least have Let's go ahead and create this into a stateful widget, but we want to have a way to click on this in a responsive way. So let's have a scaffold. App bar. And we'll just call it contacts. All right, we're not going to center the title. I'll explain more later. And let's give it a body. So this is just a pretty standard list view that you've probably done before. Let's give it a list view builder. And an item count. So this would be your contacts.length. And let's get access to our contact. And let's just return a list tile. Go ahead and copy this in for brevity. Okay, awesome. So if you click on the contacts, actually we need a hot re restart for this since we want to send in our data. Uh, just a standard list view and What's nice about this too is we already have the hover effect coming from Mac OS desktop. So not, nothing special, nothing happens when we click on it. So let's go ahead and um, create our detail screen. I went ahead and created this ahead of time to save time, but we can walk through what I did. So here we just have a simple contact screen that has an app bar with details and two list tiles that have the data for the name and the email. Now what we want to do is navigate to this when we select on the list item in the list tile. So here we can pass in contact and this is probably very familiar to what you've been building already. So you see, you can click on the details. Looks great, but it's not really great for desktop. And what I mean by that is even on tablet, you know, when you tap on an item in a list view, this, there's so much wasted space right here. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go ahead and have a selection that we wanna store inside this widget. This will be a value notifier and it'll take a contact. By default, it's gonna be set to null because you know when you first launch it, there's not gonna be any items selected. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this out into our own method. So we're gonna call this build uh, list view. 
I'm going to do widget here. And we want to grab access to this selection. So we can do value changed. And let's go ahead and grab this. So this will be right here. We can change this lambda to on select. And we'll give it contact. In here, we can pass in that item. And great, let's see if it still works. See, nothing special. All we did was just uh, extract this out into a method. Perfect. So let's work on the responsive side. So we want to wrap this with a layout builder. So let's go ahead and grab this and do layout builder takes context and dimensions gonna have our default let's go ahead and return this and let's have our breakpoint so by default we just want to show this on anything greater than a tablet or greater than a mobile view so that would be greater than equal to k tablet breakpoint and here we can return it again Still nothing special, still showing the same exact list view. But this time, what's different is here, we want to update the value of this selection. So if you can see that when we're on the mobile view, it'll push, but on list view, it'll just do this. Also, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this with a row. And we're going to give this a container because we need to specify width. Let's do const k list view width. It's going to be, let's do 300. Width. Perfect. And as you can see, already looking pretty good. Um, but not there yet. So let's do an expanded with a value listenable builder. Our listenable will be this selection. We can specify that as a contact for the generics. We'll do context, contact, and child. And we just want to return the details, um, but we've got to make sure that it's not null. So let's do if contact is equal to null, we want to return early, or actually we want to return a, a scaffold, an app bar, an empty one, and a body with a center as a child of text and that text will say no contact selected wonderful looks great um let's see what it looks like so here we go we can tap on these items but this is kind of jarring for the user so let's go ahead and add a vertical divider and do width zero already looking better but Let's also add dividers in the list view. So we can do this really easily by changing this to separated, giving a separated builder, which takes a context index, and we can return a divider of height zero. Awesome, already looking great. So what's cool about this is you see we have this nice, you know, expanded view. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like when you don't have a context selected. So here, you know, you have, sorry, I did that too fast. So here, when you click on contacts, you can see that we just wanted a simple app bar that, you know, has nothing in it, and no contact selected. You select the contact and you can see the details on the right. But then on a mobile view, you can go to the details because this is kind of the normal behavior to expect. And then all the way out to desktop, you see that we can even now make the detail screen itself responsive 
all while keeping our layout as dry as possible. This looks great on tablet, looks great on desktop, and works really well on mobile. So let's just go through the code again. All we're doing right here is we're specifying a callback for when an item is selected in the list view. We are choosing to have this list view builder that then just passes up that uh, selection. And then we just have a detail screen. And what's cool about this is this does not know what size it is. It doesn't care about that size. It always shows its app bar. And then here we only show this view if we're greater than the tablet. You'll notice that we did not use the max, the media query size, because if we want this widget to itself be responsive, let's say if we have, uh, if we we're doing this detail screen, because we want to have this as reusable as possible. So that's it for this video. In the next couple of videos, we're going to be exploring more concepts on how to make responsive UI even better. But uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.